3rd of January. Um, my name is Beth Pollard. I am an assistant professor of ancient history at San Diego State University. And for the past two and a half years, I've served as the president of the San Diego Society of the AIA. Um, so on behalf of the San Diego AIA, I'd like to welcome you all to this evening's lecture. I hope applause is that easy when I present on Saturday. Okay. <laughs> now, whether you're a San Diego local or just getting in as an attendee to the annual meeting, I thought you might be interested to know that the San Diego Society of the AIA is this year celebrating its 45th anniversary. So that's the worthy of applause. <laughs> and we boast, we boast over 100 affiliates who pay national dues. We maintain a local mailing list of about 450 associates to whom we send our biannual newsletter, copies of which, by the way, are available just outside the door. So please, please pick one of those up. Um, we generally meet once a month during the school year to hear lectures from speakers sent to us by the National AIA and to hear lectures from local scholars. There's also outside the door a handout with our spring 2007 lineup, um, if you'd like to pick that up. Our next lecture is actually Illy Naj, who is here, um, speaking to us in just a couple of weeks on January 19th on um, Etruscan demons of the underworld, correct? Yes, yeah, so we're looking forward to that in just a couple of weeks. Now, the San Diego AIA serves a diverse community with three major universities and many community colleges in the area. Now, if you're not from this area, you may also be interested to know that San Diego is home to the Marine Corps Recruit Depot, which you probably saw as you flew in, the Marine Corps Air Station Miramar, Camp Pendleton, and also a significant uh, uh, contingent of the Navy, which makes tonight's t lecture topic particularly relevant to our wider community. We are very proud here in San Diego to be hosting the 108th National Meeting of the AIA and to be kicking it off by hosting this evening's lecture. Now with that, let me pass things over to Jane Waldbaum, president of the AIA. She should say outgoing president because tonight's speaker is the incoming president, so you've got a plethora of presidents here. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here and to welcome you all to this public lecture as the kickoff event for the Archaeological Institute of America's 108th annual meeting. This is the third time the AIA has held its annual meeting in San Diego and I have to say it's really one of my favorite places uh, to have this meeting. It's the only thing that's difficult, of course, is going to the intellectual lectures instead of <laughs> enjoying your wonderful weather. I'm from Milwaukee. so. <laughs> Someone else is good. Um, I've been asked to give a little bit of background on the Archaeological Institute of America, or the AIA, and I'm very happy to do so. The AIA is the oldest and largest organization in North America devoted to archaeology. We were founded in 1879 by a group of Boston intellectuals headed by Charles Eliot Norton, a professor at Harvard University. And since that time, we've grown to a membership of over 8,500 in the United States, Canada, and Europe, with most of the members belonging to one of our now 104 local societies, including this one, this very flourishing one here in San Diego. And in fact, we're about to induct two new societies into the roster of local societies at this very meeting. And I hope most of you will come to the council meeting on Saturday to see that happen. The AIA is in part a professional society for archaeologists, but it's more than that. We are unique among professional organizations in North America in that the majority of our members are not professional archaeologists, but members of the interested general public, like many of you, who simply have a deep and abiding interest in the human past. The AIA's mission includes both supporting archaeological research and educating the public about archaeology. Our national lecture program and our prize-winning magazine, Archaeology, ably edited by Peter Young, who will soon speak to you. Peter? Over there. Um, and uh, th are dedicated to bringing the, la the latest news about archaeology to the public in an enjoyable and understandable format, even in these days of intense competition from television. And increasingly, we're reaching out to new audiences, K through 12 K through 12 teachers 
through our new series of, of teachers' workshops, children and their families, through our growing series of hands-on archaeology fairs, and now the U.S. military through a series of lectures at military bases to help the troops en route to Iraq and Afghanistan understand the ancient cultures uh, and monuments that they may be asked to protect. This last program was organized by our speaker tonight, the incoming president, Brian Rose, of the University of Pennsylvania, and his lecture will introduce you to that program. The AIA's annual meeting that starts officially tomorrow is a convention of archaeologists coming together to present papers, workshops, and colloquia on their latest research and field work. They will also be discussing some of the critical issues confronting archaeologists, museums, and the general public in today's world. There will also be a large exhibition of books on archaeology and related <laughs> subjects, many at discounted prices. One may register for the whole three-day conference, which begins tomorrow, January 4th, and ends Sunday on the 7th, or one may come for one day only. There is some registration information available at the door, and the official registration opens tomorrow at noon in this hotel. So any of you who are not already signed up to come to the meeting, uh, you are certainly very welcome to join us and to uh, register, and we hope that you do. The annual meeting also has several events of interest to the public. There will be two teachers' workshops, both of them on Saturday, aimed at helping teachers integrate learning about archaeology into the classroom. There will be an archaeology family fair on Sunday from 11 to 3. These fairs, in fact, got started here in San Diego seven years ago, and we're pleased to be able to host one here again. Those of you with children, or even if you don't have children, be sure to come to the hotel on Sunday between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. for several hours of fun-filled hands-on activities and demonstrations gu guaranteed to bring the world of archaeology alive for your kids and for you. There's a modest charge at the door, and again, there are flyers uh, available just outside the door for the fair and the teachers' workshops and, again, for registration. So pick one up if you didn't already as you're leaving. So much for the commercial. Uh, now Peter Young, the editor of Archaeology Magazine, will introduce tonight's speaker. And I thank you for your interest in the AIA, and I hope that you all enjoy the lecture. Thank you. Our speaker tonight the incoming president of the Archaeological Institute of America, C. Brian Rose, has worked hard for the AIA and archaeology as Cedric G. Bolter, professor of classical archaeology at the University of Cincinnati, and now the James B. Pritchard, professor of archaeology at the University of Pennsylvania. He is also a curator in charge of the Mediterranean section of the University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. Rose received his Ph.D. from Columbia University and excavated at Aphrodisias in Turkey and at Troy, where he was the head of the Greek, Roman, and Byzantine excavations beginning in 1988. He currently directs the Granicus Valley Regional Archaeology Survey Project in Turkey. Among his many accomplishments, as Jane has already mentioned, within the AIA, Rose conceived of and implemented our program of lecturing on archaeology to American troops en route to Iraq and Afghanistan. He's recently been working with German and Polish authorities to expand that program to their troops in Afghanistan. In her last column in the January-February issue of Archaeology, uh, Jane wrote of Brian, his leadership, energy, statue, stature as a scholar and archaeologist, and above all, his commitment to the AIA make him the right choice to lead the organization. As an editor, what I admire in Brian is his truly original flair for communicating the surprise and excitement of archaeological research and discovery. He is a born storyteller, as you will discover shortly. And I'm hoping, with what everything, everything else that's on his plate, he'll find time to 